Okay guys, so this is video number two, and this is actually section 8.8 .8 and 8.9, the last two sections of uh, chapter eight. And this, these last two sections are really easy. Uh, what are we doing on these last two sections? We're factoring perfect square trinomials and binomials, okay? Actually, 8.8 .8 is factoring perfect square binomials. 8.9 is factoring perfect square trinomials. But it, they're both really the same uh, section, right? They're the same uh, topic. So here's the deal. When we look at this guy right here, 25x squared minus 36, what's the first thing you should try to do? Greatest common factor. And there is no greatest common factor with the 25 or a 36, so we're stuck. Now, the second thing to do is this new method that I'm about to teach you. If you recognize that you have a perfect square term in the front and a perfect square term in the back, you might be able to apply a shortcut by doing square roots. Okay, let me repeat that. If you have a perfect square term in the front and a perfect square term in the back, you might be able to do a shortcut by applying square roots. So check this out. We know our answer is going to be a binomial times a binomial, right? Now, I know you don't have space, but you can just watch it. Watch me out right here because uh, it's already done for you anyway. Now, if I were to do the square root of 25x squared in my head, what do I get? 5x, right? So I'm going to put a 5x right here and a 5x right here. Now, in my head, if I were to do a square root of 36, what would I get? Six. So I'm going to put a 6 right here and a 6 right there. This is the shortcut. Now, the thing is, we still need symbols right here, either a plus plus or a minus minus or different signs. Maybe one's a plus and one's a minus, right? So what do you guys say? Negative, negative. negative, negative? Now, let's say we did put a negative and negative, right? Mm -hmm. What would I get when I go 5x times 5x, I'll get the 25x squared. But when I go 5x times negative 6, I'll get negative 30x. And then negative 6 times 5, I'll get another negative 30x. They do not cancel out. Does that make sense? So since it's a binomial, not a trinomial, I want the middle term to cancel out. And the only way the middle term is going to cancel out is what? is we have different signs, one negative and one positive. Okay, so that's how we know that one has to be a minus and a plus. What do you guys think of that? Okay, and, and that's it. Like, that's, that's what we're doing here. Like, let me, let me do one over here on the side. Even if, uh, I mean, we've already done this one, right? What times what? is the last number that if you combine together is the middle number. What times what is negative 9 that if you combine together is nothing? Positive 3 times a negative 3, right? Now we already knew that because we've already done quadratic trinomials where you think what times what is the last number that if you add together is the middle number and there is no middle number here. So what times what is negative 9 that if you add together is nothing? That would be a positive 3 and a negative 3. But you could also have used that square root concept Oh, I have a perfect square term here. I have a perfect square term here. What's the square root of x squared? It's just x. What's the square root of 9? It's just 3. Okay? And then since there is no middle term, one has to be a plus, one has to be a minus. So you could have used the square root concept right there, or the square root shortcut for these perfect square uh, binomial. But I probably wouldn't. I would just say what times what is negative 9? That if you add it together is nothing. But... If I were to write something like this, like let's say a 25x squared minus uh, 36, then I'd be like, oh, there's a perfect square term in the front, there's a perfect square term in the back. I know that the middle term has to cancel out, so I'm going to apply the shortcut here. What's the square root of 25x squared? 5x. 5x. What's the square root of 36? 6, yeah. So you put a 5x and a 6 on both binomials. Now, since there is no middle term, one has to be a plus, one has to be a minus. And it doesn't matter which one you put first or second, as long as the signs are different. Is that hard? Heck no. It's super easy. That's okay. super hard, bro. No, all you're doing is square roots of perfect square values, right? The square to 16 is 4. The square to 36 is 6. The square to 81 is 9. So, Jezreel, if I say 49 x squared minus uh, 
81. Are you able to think of the square roots of those values and then just plug them into your answer format? What's the square to 49x squared? 7 with an x. 7 with an x. So you, you take the square root of this and you put it here and here. And then you take the square root of the 81, nine. which is 9. Where are you going to put the 9s at? Right here and here. Now you know that there is no middle term, so they have to cancel out. So what are the signs going to be? Positive and negative. Positive and, negative. and that's it. This is not hard. This, this is easy. It's so easy. Okay. Now, now of course, if, uh, if you didn't have a perfect square term, then you wouldn't be able to do this, right? And sometimes you do have perfect square terms, and you're still not able to do it. You got to, like, think about it and see if it actually works. Um, perfect square binomials are the easiest, but we will have, as you can see on our notes here, we will have a perfect square trinomial. So look, it's the same A value and C value. So let's zoom in and uh, look at this quadratic trinomial. So right here, oh, that's a perfect square term. I could do the square root of 25, x squared, and I could also do the square root of 36. So let me do the parentheses. What's the square root of 25, x squared? 5x. 5x. What's the square root of 36? 6. Now, if I put a plus and a minus, that'll get rid of my middle term, and I actually do have a middle term. So we do not want a plus and a minus. So it's either going to be a positive positive or a negative negative. So what do you guys think? Positive positive? positive, positive. If it were positive positive, positive, the whole thing would be positive, right? But we need a negative right there in the middle. So we know for sure by process of elimination that it has to be negative and a negative. Oh, okay. Right? So uh, we, uh, it does require some thought. There's, it's really fast. It's really short. But it does require some thought. You do the square to this guy, put it there. Do the square to that guy, put it there. Repeat them right here. And then you got to think of your signs. Well, if the whole thing's positive, yeah, both of them are going to be positive. If there is no middle term, then one has to be positive, one has to be negative. And it's that easy. Why is it negative and negative? Because the middle term is negative. So think about this. And it's always good... It's not good enough to just write this answer. It's always good to double check it. So if I did go through with it, check it out. Let's go through with it. What is 5x times 5x? 25x squared. So far, so good. How about 5x times negative 6? Negative 30x. And then how about negative 6 times positive 5? Negative 30x. How about negative 6 times negative 6? Positive 36. If I combine these two middle terms, I really do get that middle value. So I know I factored it right. Okay. So it's very important that you check your answer, especially when you have trinomials. So take the square root of the first one, take the square root of the last one, plug them into your answer format, think about the signs that are necessary, and then you should double check it to make sure it works. Because it doesn't always work. Yeah, if there, it's in a square, like if it's not a perfect square. Yeah, if it's not a perfect square term, so like let's say, let's say we had something like this, like uh, we have a, a perfect square term here, yeah? 4x squared. And then we have maybe a minus 2x, and then maybe a plus 6, yeah? And you're like, oh, perfect square term here, but right here, no perfect square term. Dang. Okay, so what other options of factoring are there? You're always supposed to start with what? GCF. So like right here, we could pull out a GCF. There's other things that we could do. But this shortcut is only when you have a perfect square term in the front and a perfect square term in the back. That's where you could apply the shortcut. If you don't have a perfect square term in the A value and the C value, then, then you can't use the shortcut. Right? Um, so right here on this one, I would, I don't even know if we should continue with this, pull out a 2, and then I would have 2x squared minus 1x plus 3. And then I would attempt to continue going A times C and continue factoring. But I'm not going to, let's not waste time. Let's stick with what we were learning up here. If you have a perfect square term in the front and a perfect square term in the back, Let's apply the shortcut and check our answer. So ladies and gentlemen, this guy, what will it factor to? 2x, 2x. Where do we get the 2x from? By doing the square root of that. OK. And what are the other numbers that belong right here? 9. Nine. And how do we get that? Square root of 81, right? So uh, a 9 right here and a 9 right there. 
Now, what about the signs? Both of them negative. Now, I know some of us are thinking, wait, if they're both negative, how are we going to get a positive 81 over here? Yeah, because negative 9 times negative 9 is positive 81. <clears throat> so if we double check it, which you should do, 2x times 2x, 4x squared, 2x times negative 9, that's negative 18x, negative 9 times positive 2 is another negative 18x, negative 9 times negative 9 is positive 81, and of course, it really does give us that quadratic trinomial above, so I'm absolutely positive it works. Now, sometimes, and I don't think I'll do this to you on the test, but sometimes they'll give you something like, like a 40 right here. So you see the perfect square term, you see the perfect square term, and you plug it into your answer format, and you think you're done, but when you check it, it doesn't work because the middle terms don't add up to 40. So it's a very important to check your answers. That's what I'm saying, okay? I don't know, maybe. But it's still good to check anyway. That way you're absolutely positive you have it right. How about number two? By the way, this is section 8.9. 8.8 is the quadratic uh, binomials. These are quadratic trinomials, but it's all the same concept. So the square root of 9x squared is 3x. The square root of 4 is 2. So 3x and 2. How about those signs? Both minus and minus. And if I do distribute 3x times 3x, 9x squared, 3x times negative 2, negative 6x, negative 2 times 3x, another negative 6x, then negative 2 times negative 2, positive 4. These guys really do give me that negative 12, so I know I did it right. Last one. What? This is not a perfect square term. Okay, so what other, what other tools do we have in our toolbox? GCF. GCF. What could I pull out? A2. So let's pull out a 2. If I do pull out a 2, what's left over on the inside? 4x squared, 4x squared minus 9. Are we done? On the inside, is there anything else that I could do? Now, this is the point where you're supposed to be like, hey, 4x squared is a perfect square term. 9 is a perfect square term. So we could apply that shortcut, right? So let's, let's set this up. What's the square root of 4x squared? 2x. What's the square root of 9? So we put the 2x right there, the 3 right there. Now we know that there is no middle term. So we know that when we distribute, that middle term has to cancel out. So what about those signs that belong right here and here? One positive, one negative. It doesn't matter which one you put first. One positive and one negative. Now, what about that original GCF that we pulled out at the beginning? You just bring it down, put it right in front. This is the final factored form answer. And that's pretty much both sections, 8.8 .8 and 8.9. And that's it. We're done with the entire chapter 8. Um, let's take a look at our homework on this section. I'm actually going to pick up the homework on a separate video.